Greetings fellow Gorehounds, Horror Guru here, and unfortunately I need to ask you all for some help. You see, my amazing and lovely girlfriend, HorrorMom92, has fallen into some dire financial trouble due to a paycheck screw up at her work, and thus she needs some help paying the bills this month in order to keep the roof over her and her family's head. So as a result of that, I'm going to include her GoFundMe campaign in the description below. Feel free to donate if you have the means, but even if you don't, sharing the campaign on social media would also be a ton of help. Thank you to all who donate and share in advance, and thank you to the rest of you for your time and patience. And now, with all of that said, let us start the review. Greetings, fellow Gorehounds, and welcome back to a blood splattered vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. And I'm Count Jackula. And today we're going to talk about a British supernatural horror film, Consecration, from director Christopher Smith, who some of you may know as the director of Triangle, Severance, and Black Death. So needless to say, when I saw his name in the credits of this movie, I was pretty fucking excited. This continues his <laughs> yes. Christianity, go fuck yourself. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of that in Black Death in particular. Oh, yeah. There's also also some weird time stuff in this movie, but we'll have to wait to the spoiler section. Yeah, yeah, that's to talk about territory. that. There's a, there's a little bit of triangle. There's a little bit of black death. There's not a lot of severance, but there's also not a lot of room for severance in this movie. Uh, no, no, like there's only room for one really big metaphor. Here, yes, you know. So the crux of this movie is you have this woman whose brother is a priest at a monastery and seemingly killed someone and then killed himself. And she's trying to figure out whether that actually happened the way the monastery claims or whether or not he was murdered to cover something up. Then the rest of the movie ensues. But uh, I do want to make one thing uh, perfectly clear. That is the plot of the movie. The actual story of the movie is about a very atheistic woman being confronted with something otherworldly and kind of coming to revelations about herself through this. Yeah. That's the actual story. In many ways, it's somewhat of a good for her movie. Oh, yes. But I don't want to go too far into that part because that's definitely spoiler territory. <laughs> yeah. There is a point in the movie where you're definitely like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh! This is a movie with a mystery that is actually genuinely surprising with all its twists and turns. I thought the movie was going in one direction when it started. By the time we got to the end, we were in a completely different movie. Yeah. I could compare it to a lot of movies, but it would give it away. It would. It would. But you what know. I can say without spoiling anything is that the scary parts are scary, the mystery parts are super intriguing, and the answers are surprising and very fulfilling. Yeah. You're going to love each twist if you're anything like us. Yeah. Also, there is funny nun death. Yes. Yeah, you know, you, you gotta have all of that. Not none of that. All of, all that. of it. I don't know where this sits on the nun exploitation scale. Not it's a little bit more high, high end. High. Yeah, yeah. It's a little less like nun exploitation is all about, all right, let's get them titties out and hit a whip on them. Yeah, you yeah. Know, where like, this is not is exploitation. This is a little bit more, I hate to use the term elevated. This is not about dad ass or them jugs. <laughs> no. This is all about this one character and yeah. her relationship to what is happening around her. Is it elevated? Uh, yeah, I think if you if you buy into to that title, this would qualify. Th this movie definitely, you know, says a lot about the human condition. It does. It says a lot about faith. Yes. It says a lot about the church. Oh, yeah. This, this movie kind of treats the church the way Severance treats businesses, or at least yeah. the business world. That should give you an idea of certain things that are going to happen over the course of this movie. What I also want to say is that it's not a slow burn. You'd think, given the premise and everything, it actually moves at a very, very yeah, speedy it, it's, pace. It's like a lean hour and a half. Yeah. You know, like. Like, normally you get this kind of movie, it's like two hours, yeah. two and a half hours. But no, this one is like, it gets in, it makes its point, and it yeah. ends. If you think you're going into this and you're getting like a very slow burn, A24 kind of film, it moves a lot faster than that. Oh, yeah, yeah. This Way moves faster. at a pretty brisk pace, but it doesn't feel rushed. No, it doesn't. It is the perfect pace yeah, for the, the perfect, story it's, it's telling. Yeah, it's perfectly paced for the story. Yeah. Absolutely. Unfortunately, we're going to have to move on to the spoilers really soon because it's really hard to talk about the more awesome parts of this movie because most of them are past the twists. Yeah, the first half of the movie definitely is building up to the first reveal. Yes. And when you get to the final reveal, yes. you're like, oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, uh-oh. 
Oh. Yeah, that, it's one of those like halfway through, I was just like, all right, at this point, the movie's completely shifted from what I thought it was. And if it goes in one direction, I'm going to love it. If it goes in the other direction, I'm going to be very iffy on it. Yes. And it goes in a third direction I did not perceive <laughs> that I loved. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this will especially hit well and hard if you are a woman who has religious trauma. Yes, if you're a woman with religious trauma, I would put all the trigger warnings in front of this movie, but I would also recommend you watch it because this yeah, is a movie. Yeah, the movie is made for you. Yeah, this is a movie made 100% for you, especially if you grew up in a very oppressive religious home. Yeah. Which this main character has, which is partially why she starts the movie so anti-theist. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Consecration. It's currently available on Shudder, though you can rent it on other platforms, but if you have Shudder, you might as well watch it there because yeah. it's there. And uh, you know us, we recommend Shudder. We're not sponsored by them, but we love them. With that said, my fellow Gorehounds, let us move on to the spoilers. <laughs> Okay, so let's go through this like twist by wow. twist. Okay. The first thing that's very clear in this movie is that no matter what's happening with the suicide or murder of her brother, you know that something supernatural is happening yes. around our main character. Yeah, there are too many mm -hmm. people that basically just come up to her and then for no apparent reason kill themselves. Yes, there's just weird shit happening around her. She's having these weird freaky nightmares, some of which seem to be like the past, some of which seem to be maybe premonitions, but you're not sure. Yeah. And on top of that, there are scenes in which you like see the nuns and the priests arguing and then like candles blow out for no reason. Like they angered yeah. someone, you know? So you know something is going on. The first big twist of this movie, once you start to realize that's going on is that the brother was murdered. Yeah. The monastery that he was staying at murdered him because they were looking for the relic. The relic, which was apparently housed in this monastery back in the fucking Crusader days. And then at some point got washed to sea. In 93, there was an earthquake. Yeah. And that part of the chapel, the church is fell into the ocean. There you go. Like, he remembers the detail a little better. Yeah. That's right, the earthquake. <laughs> and they believed that her brother knew where it was and tortured him. Like, literally put, like, a slab of fucking, like, concrete on his chest. Yeah. And had a bunch of nuns jumping up and down. <laughs> which which was, is a hilarious scene, a, by the way. It's a hilarious, like, it's shot. It's really funny. <laughs> it's really funny. But yeah, because it is up. just nuns going, jumpy, 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 Yeah, jumpy, yeah. Jumpy. <laughs> <laughs> It's really fucked up. So at that point you realize, okay, the nuns are full of shit, they're evil. Yeah. Like there's something going on, but they're also looking for this relic that they seem to believe houses some sort of evil that they're trying to prevent. So they think they're doing the world a good by doing all this. All yeah. Right. So that's the first big twist. The next twist is that the priest that's been very friendly to her throughout the entire movie is kind of a piece of shit too. Yeah, well, like, you could kind of see that coming because yeah. you're like, yeah, I don't trust this yeah. guy at all. He's in disagreement with the nuns, but he's also not on her side yeah. in this whole thing. He's yeah. kind of got his own agenda, his own church agenda, because there's two different agendas in the church. The nuns agenda, which apparently was passed down from generations to guard this relic, and then yeah. the church's agenda to basically get rid of all of this shit that's yeah. uh, giving them a bad name. That leads us us into the next twist, which is that all these flashes she's having are premonitions. Yeah. And they're her, her past. She is seeing her past in which she grew up in this home with a dad who was missing out to sea, but then she prayed to God and then he came back one night. And then once he came back, he was never the same. And he like locked her in a cage and locked the entire family in a cage. And eventually through an escape attempt that was coordinated between her and her mom, the mom ends up getting murdered by the dad. So yeah. the dad's been in jail for years when this movie started for murdering their mom. So you kind of understand why the children from this whole situation are very, very traumatic traumatized her and her brother. Her yeah. brother went and sought the church for guidance and she went and sought other things. Um, yeah. Here's the thing. She kind of realizes that whoever she prayed to, whatever answered was not God. Yeah, it wasn't the God that they talked about. And that's the supernatural entity that's been following her and has been haunting this monastery ever since she got there. But here's the big twist. Here's the big one. She's the entity. Yeah. 
She's not only the entity, she is the relic. Back in the fucking middle ass ages, when they were doing the goddamn crusades, they found this random pagan god? Shaman? What is she? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. They, they seem to like refer to her as a fallen angel, so they think she's a devil, essentially. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, is like she straight up resurrects people. Yeah. And that's how her dad ended up, who was lost at sea, comes back that one night. She basically yeah. resurrected him. And because she resurrected him, he concluded that she's the devil, and that's why everything happened when they were kids. It wasn't necessarily that he was corrupted because he was brought back from the dead and more so that he was a super religious man was like, there's something wrong with you. I must lock you all away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then lost his mind through doing that. Yeah, you just proved that my entire religion is completely wrong. Exactly. This leads into the finale where you have this confrontation between the nuns, the priest, and her. Yeah. The priest seems to be like he's trying to help her, but then really what he's trying to do is lock her down in this fucking like cage they've created. Yeah, and like this crypt. This that crypt is, that is that a, they used to have her in yeah. until 93. That has all these wardings and stuff on it to keep her in this essentially yeah. this crypt cage. But while this is all happening, she's also been having these like visions of like a nun in mirrors looking yeah. at her at certain moments throughout the story. She at this point is wearing that nun outfit when they're, you know, trying to consecrate her, hence the title, yeah. consecration, and bury her inside that crypt. She realizes that they're not on her side. They're going to lock her in this cage. They locked her in the cage before. They took her from her home yeah. where she lived with her people that she treated well because she was a healer. Yeah. She wasn't like a murderer. She like healed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's not like evil. Yeah. You know? So at this point, she basically uses her powers to fuck up the priest by fucking having like a, a cross just fucking slammed down into his back. So he's he's kind of like carrying the burden of Jesus on yeah, his back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's also impaled in <laughs> the ground. Impaled. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. There's nuns that try to attack her that she forces to kill themselves because she has immense power. If she is not a fallen angel, she is 100% a god of some kind. Yes. An old god of some kind. Yes. At this point, the movie had set up that there is this ancient way that crusaders used to find penance for all the murdering they've done while they're on the crusades. And they did it by going to this one church on this one cliff. And there's this one little spot on the floor that you take steps back for each one of your sins. And if you have enough sins, you're just gonna go off the cliff. Yep. But once you have done this and you've prayed to God, uh, you will be forgiven for your sins. She at this point does this, falls backwards, then proceeds to travel through time. And yep. every single moment throughout her life that she saw this nun in the mirror, it was her. It was her showing up and saving her from her dad. It was her showing up and saving her from these people that tried to take her away when she was a kid that she completely forgot about. And then she falls. And then like you get this whole point where like the church is covering all this up, everything that happened. We're just going to bury it all. Like we're going to pretend that the priest that was here that died, he's been sent off on some mission yeah. somewhere or whatever. And then we cut to her and she's back in her normal life with her old friend. Yeah. And at the beginning of the movie, she was established as an optometrist and she has a patient who is going blind real quickly because of her condition. And she was trying to get her friend to do this experimental emergency procedure that could either save her eyes or destroy her eyes. Right. Basically. But yeah. But basically she's going to go blind if it doesn't yeah. happen. So. And we found out, we find out that patient never ended up going to the procedure because according to the patient, the main character uh, cured her and she is going to go out into the world and heal people, what she yeah, was doing but, but before she's, the yeah. Crusades. This movie opened up with this cold opening. Cold opening, yeah. Where she is walking down the street and this one nun comes up to her and points a gun right at her head. Over the course of the movie, we have met this nun. This nun is the leader of the women who have been in charge of this relic for centuries. Catch up to that point at the very end of the movie. She now has the gun pointed at her head and she's in the middle of the street and she just fucking gets hit by a car. <laughs> <laughs> and in the car, yeah. there's a little angel, like, like yeah. bobblehead yeah. angel <laughs> dancing like this after she gets him by the car and then fucking credits. And I'm just like, that was an amazing punchline to the end of this movie. <laughs> Is she an angel? 
Is she a fallen angel? Is she a god? Doesn't matter. The point is the church's estimation that she's evil and that she's here to hurt people is wrong. She's not. Yeah. The only reason why people get hurt in this entire movie is because they keep trying to prevent her from doing anything and in the process either get themselves killed or kill someone else. So you end this movie very much in that mood of you know what? Good for her. You know, good for her. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Even when the reveal happened and it's like, oh, you're the relic, you're the fallen angel, you're whatever. I'm sitting there going like, yeah, but based on everything we've learned so far about her past and your guys' past, I don't think she's done anything wrong. It seems like you guys have done all the evil acts in the name of Yeah, yeah, him. yeah. In fact, <laughs> like the power of the church actually keeps her yeah. from saving somebody. And what I like about it is that from a meta level, it's kind of the story of a woman who is exceptional, who is being forced to be unexceptional because of yeah, the church and its restrictions. Yeah, yeah exactly. And then exactly. is hunted for going against their uh, restrictions. Yeah, no, put her in a box, put her away. Exactly. You know, like it, it's funny because the symbolism is actually sometimes it's really on the nose. Yeah, yeah. And I found that immensely satisfying. Yeah. As a movie, yeah. as a story, as a reveal too. Uh, so uh, do you have any? Final thoughts on consecration? It's like a lot of the uh, religious trauma movies, mm -hmm. horror movies that we have had. You know, it's up oh, there yeah. with like St. Maud. Oh, 100%. Um, I was thinking about St. Yeah. Maud when you get to the end. Yeah, 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 especially when you get to the end. Because St. Maud's from a different perspective. It's from someone who is deeply religious. Yeah. And trying to find that God and the terrible things that happen along the way. <laughs> That last shot. Oh, man. God. That, that oh, movie's... man. Talk about so beautiful. Both these movies have punchline endings. Yes. But they're both dark in their punchlines. <laughs> oh, God. What were some of the other ones? Of religious trauma yeah, movies? Yeah, the religious trauma movies that have come out that have been, like, fairly recent. <laughs> the Witch counts. The Witch definitely counts. Its ending kind of reminds me of the ending to this movie, though it's a lot darker about it. Yes. <laughs> this movie yeah. is a little bit more hopeful. Like, she's going to go out and she's going to, you know, cure the world now that she's free from the Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Church. But at the end of the which you're like, what's well, a good ending for you, but is, is it, it good a good for ending world? for the world? Yeah, like, good question. maybe. I mean, I'm, I'm cool with it. But to know? be fair, given the world that she lived, fuck that world. Fuck it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I don't know why I am tickled pink by the fact that the goat that was Black Phillip almost killed the actor that oh, was no. playing the dad. Oh no, that would be so bad. I, I can't remember the actor's name off the top of my head, but it was like, it's the other guy who was in Game of Thrones who isn't Liam Cunningham. I know who you're talking yeah. about. I'll put his name right here, but I honestly can't remember it off the top of my head. Yeah, like that whole scene where he's like, running around and looking like mm -hmm. he's gonna fuck that guy up. Yeah. That's actually happening. That was one of those, nice. oh shit, bro camera, it's happening. <laughs> Do the scene. Ah, get this goat on me. <laughs> well, with, uh, with that said, and now that we've moved on to talking about other awesome movies that this reminded us of, so yeah. if if you like those movies, you might want to check out this movie. Trust yes, me. <laughs> yes, and if you like this movie, check out those others if for some reason you haven't seen them. Absolutely. All right, well, with all that said, let us... Uh... You went for the chorus. We were supposed to do the bridge. <laughs> You're correct. I'm Count Jackula. You can follow me on YouTube. Enter Count Jackula in that little uh, YouTube search engine. You'll find me. You can also subscribe and be alerted every time I go online on YouTube Live. And you can also follow me on Twitter. Uh, don't worry, I'm trying to find ways of promoting that don't involve Twitter because Twitter's I, a dumpster fire that is slowly dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we're starting to get to the bottom of the barrel there. Yeah, and it's yeah. still on fire. So I don't know how much longer that shit's gonna yeah. last. Good thing is there are platforms, for example, Instagram, you can follow me at Satanic Jacula and at TikTok, Real Count Jacula. <laughs> you know, and TikTok will be real easy because you go there, blip. If you don't see this face, wrong. Yeah, true. You know, you know instantly, you know, <laughs> and that's great. That's a good thing. It's true. How about you? Y'all know me. I'm the Horror Guru. You can find me at the Horror Guru on Twitter, on Twitch, on Instagram and Facebook and many other platforms. Just look up the Horror Guru or Blood Splattered Cinema and I'll be there. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that notification bell so you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And if you'd like to help out either of us more directly, be sure to check out our Patreon pages. And remember, if you decide to go the Patreon route, even a dollar a month can go a long way. If you made it this far into the vlog, then I want you to comment below and be sure to comment below using the hashtag impaled on your own petard. Use the hashtag impaled on your own petard. That way I know. That way Jack knows. 
That way the whole world knows you watched this video all the way through. With that said, my fellow Gorehounds, we got one interesting movie to vlog after this mm -hmm. that I'm not sure most of you have heard of, but you're gonna wanna see it. So uh, tune into our next vlog to find out what that is. During the filming of, uh, I think it was, it was one of the Star Trek. Yeah, 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 it was It was Star Trek Next Generation. The guy playing Riker and Patrick Stewart, they're, they're like making one of those like epic jumps over a, yeah. over a thing together. I think it was Nemesis. And they accidentally fucked it up. Okay. And so while Riker is going up, fucking Patrick Stewart like is fucking like slammed up mm -hmm. behind him. So Riker was hoisted up on his own Picard. <laughs>